Hello, networkers, and welcome back to another episode of Ask a Network Engineer, where I will answer one of your questions. And this question comes from Elrod, and pretty much what he's talking about here in his question is, what's your take on moving from sysadmin to network engineer? I started at a day center, but somehow landed into the land of servers and so forth. Uh, does your work role combine server administration during downtimes or at any point at all? Also, what advice would you give in this scenario? Do you think finishing the MCSC and going to Cisco would be wise or just go head in first into Cisco or as a network engineer and Cisco certifications, basically? Okay, great, um, great question. A lot of great questions in there. So let's talk about that. So the first thing that I must say right off the bat is you need to focus and specialize on one main area, main area, whether it's servers, network, security, desktops, you need to figure out which one you want to specialize in. Now, the key thing of specializing is really kind of based on many things, but what's more important, it needs to be something that you truly enjoy. So if you enjoy servers more than networking, I would recommend going down the server track very, very hard. If you love networking more, then go down that track. You gotta do what you enjoy because it makes it easier for learning the material and wanting to learn and progressing in that career. Another component to consider is what is your current level of experience as a server administrator compared to a network engineer? So let's say that your experience is a little bit more higher with server administration. So you deal with Active Directory, LDAP, you deal with applications like email and web services. That's pretty strong, okay? But let's say that your networking is very minimal starting out. So basically, it's, you'll probably be more successful of pursuing that server path because you already have some level of experience already on your resume and progressing and moving up higher is easier compared to just a little bit of networking. Because guess what? If you want to do networking, this has to go away and you're back at the bottom and you have to slowly build yourself up. So you got to keep those considerations in mind. It's a very tough position to be in. That if you have this much server experience and just a little bit of networking, well, maybe you like that more, which is why you have that kind of experience. But it could be a sacrifice. If you prefer this, like networking is really a lot of fun, then you have to basically kind of forget about this and focus on building this up. So that's something you gotta really, really keep in mind. So if you are a sysadmin and you have a little bit of networking on your resume, that does look very good. It does stand out. But understand that your networking experience and what you do on the job will be very, very limited. Uh, be very basic because being a network engineer is a full-time role for medium and large size companies um, because you're dealing with enterprise products and those products have advanced features and services and that will of course be why larger companies will need that kind of equipment and infrastructure and why they would need a specialized network engineer because as a sysadmin well there's a lot of sysadmins that i know that i work with a lot for some of the bigger projects that requires bringing in a network engineer. And the sysadmins, they do some basic networking. Well, what does that mean exactly? So some of the things that sysadmins, or system admins do are things like they set up wireless solutions. Well, these are solutions that are cloud-based like Meraki and Arrowhive and Ruckus, for example. And for that, you get the access point, you plug it into the network, it gets an IP address dynamically, and then from there, it will connect to the cloud, and from, your, and from a web interface, you can figure the network name, the security, and other basic parameters. Ta-da, you have a wireless solution. I know a lot of sysadmins that are doing exactly that. But they also do a little bit of small business firewall deployments, like with SonicWall. So they set up like a VPN tunnel. That's pretty simple to do. There's, there's wizards on it. Just run through the wizard, you got a VPN set up. Or setting up a policy or basic policies like that. So I know a lot of sys admins that do that, right? And that's pretty common. But all the advanced type of equipment or features like, let's say the Palo Alto Networks firewall. Now that is the enterprise product that has a lot of advanced features built in. Like support for BGP, even advanced BGP features like conditional advertisements. 
That's at the level of a network engineer of knowing a lot about BGP. So those are basically kind of what a sysadmin does. They do basic networking. And yes, that can help you to eventually become a network engineer over time. So the other question that was kind of brought up is, uh, from my experience, as a network engineer, ever in my career, whether it was as an engineer or as a consultant, have I ever done server administration as part of my job at any time? The answer to that question is, no, I have never ever done server administration work while on the job as an engineer or as a consultant. And this is really the main point that I talked about before on this channel, but it's important for this video specifically. This is what I've learned very, very early on in my career. And that is, how do you want to be identified? Do you want to be identified as a server person? as a network person, maybe a desktop person, okay? And when you are hired into the company and based on your resume, it's going to basically reflect that. So if you have like 80% of um, server experience with Active Directory and Microsoft, LDAP, Unix, Mac, whatever, and you have a little bit of networking, you are identified as a server administrator, simple as that. Uh, if you have a lot of networking, like for me, my resume, I have a lot of networking on there. Probably 10% is server, which is something I did very early on in my career. I think it's still there in my resume. Okay. I am identified as a network engineer. And that's important because that means that that's what my specialty, that's what I will be doing in that company. So let's say that I want to do servers. You know, like, hey, I can help you out with building up this server. Um, that would be really harder for me to do that because, you know, but you network, you don't do servers. So that's something I've seen a whole lot with myself and with other people that want to help out in different areas. Now, if you are a small business consultant, like you work with small businesses, yes, those people do everything. They do the servers, they do the desktop, they do the networking. But again, the networking stuff is very basic. Even some of the server stuff is very, very basic. When you get to the enterprise level, that's where you must have the particular person with their specialty. And that's really why you want to figure out what your specialty will be. Okay, so let's wrap up this video. And what do you do next? What are your next steps? So if any of you are watching this video and you are in the same kind of predicament as Elrod, that you are probably a system administrator or a desktop technician or something like that, and you want to be a network engineer. You want to make that transition, okay? You're trying to figure out, okay, how can I make that decision? So let me give you a couple of points to kind of get you in the right direction of what to do. So number one, first off, is you want to figure out what do you enjoy the most? Which area in IT do you enjoy, okay? And you know, like, do you love servers more than networks or desktops more than servers? You need to figure that out. So maybe get a piece of paper and kind of write down an order from very interested to less interested and just kind of figure that out. And kind of figure out exactly like, you know, do you like to install or set up servers or networks? Do you like to use command line interface, you know? Do you like uh, Microsoft? And, you know, we want to kind of just figure that out to yourself. So for me, for example, if this was my list, so number one would be networking, of course, because I love networking. Okay, I've been doing that for a long time, so I hope I like it. Number two, I would probably say programming. I do like programming. It's, it's a lot of fun, um, but it's also a big learning curve too. There's so much there you can definitely learn. I think that's why I kind of like it too. Number three, which is really servers or desktops. Hmm. I'm gonna say servers and desktop is number three for me because I do not like servers. I do not like desktops. For example, um, there's a lot of friends of mine that are desktop technicians. That's what they do. And if you are a desktop person or with any kind of desktop experience, you have to work a lot with printers. 
There are a lot of people that have printer problems. I hate printers. So that's why um, I stopped being a desktop technician a long, long time ago because I hated doing that. You know, a user calls and says, I can't print. <laughs> it's a pet peeve for me. So that's why I don't do servers or um, printing or desktop because it's those kind of things that you have to do. But that discovery is going to help you to determine what do you enjoy the most. And what you enjoy the most is what you should definitely say, you know what, I'm going to be doing that for my career. And then from there, you want to then focus heavy with your learning and your experience, your resume, um, focus around that specialty. So if you choose desktops, for example, okay, then you want to make sure that your learning is about desktops and desktop operating systems. Basically, it's going to be Mac OS 10, Ubuntu, very likely Windows, Windows 10 as of this recording right now. Um, and then also getting the correct experience. Make sure that your resume reflects that you are identified as a desktop technician. So it's going to show that for your experience, but also your certification track. You want to get certifications that are basically desktop centric. So getting certified with some Mac um, certifications, Windows certifications. You want to have all of that. Now, since we're talking about networking on this channel, it'd be the exact same thing. Your learning is network focused. Your certifications is going to likely be Cisco certifications, your CCNA, CCMP, and so forth. And your resume is going to be structured as a network engineer. Okay, Check out my LinkedIn page as kind of a good template or baseline for what that will look like. Okay, It's not what my resume looks like. It's kind of like that. It has more details, but that should be a good starting point of figuring out what a network-centric kind of profile or resume looks like. But the main thing is, once you figure out what you want to um, specialize in, then you want to focus on the learning, the hands-on, the experience, the resume, and the certifications. And the last point I want to bring up is, when you're trying to figure this out, and you figure out what you enjoy, then kind of what you need to do about it, you also need to reflect on what you have done so far, and really make a decision about what you need to do moving forward. Because let's say that you do have five years of server experience and you want to do networking. Let's say that you truly, maybe you like networking a little bit. You got to think about that because what that technically means is being 100% honest with you. If you want to go right into networking, then that means that you got to kind of start back from the bottom and build your way right back up. Now, you could have server experience and you could jump right into a basic networking world. That is possible, okay? It kind of happened for me. I had basic networking experience, more server, and once I went to Cisco, then yes, things change. So it depends on the opportunity, depends on the environment, depends on the company. But a lot of companies that I have personally seen nowadays, maybe things before was very different, you know, because that was during the dot-com era as we called it back then. I mean, companies were, were, it was a booming industry back then. And this is like, like I said, 1999, 2000 period, I guess. It was in a huge, huge demand. So Cisco was like, you have IT experience? Great, you're hired. That's pretty much what it was. It was a very fortunate time. Um, but nowadays, people are looking for, we want a network person. We want a server person. We need a desktop person. They're very specific about what they require. Okay. Now it's not impossible, but you got to be, you got to do more of your research. Okay. Look at um, universities, look at government type, um, you know, places. Those places are more open that if you are a server person, you could become a network person very easily. I have seen that at the Department of Energy. So, but do your, do your homework, do your research on that and apply it for those kind of companies to really kind of figure out what is the best environment that can accept you if you do have a different kind of specialty. So that's the main thing I want you to definitely figure out. And we are done with this episode. So thank you very much for the great questions and keep those considerations in mind for your decision on what to focus on or what to specialize in. And as always, I want to hear from the rest of you guys. So if you have any questions about being a network engineer or anything in the networking field, in the IT field, leave those questions below in the comments and your question will come up in a future episode or speed round in the future. 
So thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channel, that would mean a lot. And also check out and support our training at rodhub.net. And we recently released a new training series for the Cisco ASA with Firepower Services. So until next time, keep networking.